Hi, I'm Alex Paulton. and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Talking Time Pieces where we talk about watch collecting and horology. Today, we've got um, on loan from a good friend of mine, uh, Gordon, the proprietor over at Scotch and Soda in Wiesbaden. He let me borrow his new Christopher Ward the 12, which I assume they call it the 12 because there are 12 variants. I couldn't see any other uh, possible reference, and they don't actually say it in the description. So I'm assuming it's they have 12 of them, 12 different styles from 36 to 41. Although the 41 is only the skeleton, the uh, $6,000 skeleton, 55 and change. Um, as I know the euro prices and the dollar and the euro fluctuate a bit, but currently I believe the uh, 12 skeleton is 5,500 euros, and the Arctic blue that I have here is uh, 1300 so uh, euros. But at that price, it's right there toe-to-toe -to -toe with um, some of the other integrated bracelet watches out there, uh, although it is a little bit more expensive than the PRX and the Movado. Um, it's less than some of the others integrated bracelet watches that are out there, uh, like the Mito Multifort. But it is a very interesting piece, and uh, let's turn the camera around and take a close-up look at it. So here we are with the uh, Christopher Ward 12, a very interesting piece, and, you know, one of many of the uh, latest generation of integrated bracelet watches that have come out recently. Um, there, in fact, uh, I just recently talked about the uh, Movado, Right, I just recently talked about the Movado and had an opportunity to compare it side by side with the Tissot PRX. Now, in the case of the 12, the 12 is an interesting mix. Is an interesting mix of uh, different style cues. It's got kind of a Laureato esque bezel. The integrated bracelet case, of course kind of harkens Genta-esque, right? Um, the face is very, very deeply textured, which is a nice touch and it gives it some personality. And the uh, indices have you know, an interesting shape as well. They kind of harken a little bit Aquaterra-ish, but they're not squared off at the ends, so they have their own uh, look to them. They're not as fat and oval as, say, something on a Daytona. Uh, in general, it is a good-looking face. Some people don't like a heavily textured dial. Some do, but that gives this watch some uh, personality beyond just having, you know, your standard tapisserie face or, um, you know, guilloche. The loom looks very nice as well. Um, holes pr reasonably long, and uh, by morning it passes my uh, look under the covers test to see what time it is before getting up. It passes that test as well. But it does have a very clean and crisp presentation in loom. On the time grapher, it's doing quite well. It's riding right about uh, plus seven, plus eight, good amplitude, good beat error. It's just running well. It does have a screw on, screw on crown protectors, which, um, kind of harken to other uh, watches. The only one I can think of at the top of my head is Oris currently that had screw on, that has a screw on crown uh, protectors, crown guards, uh, but there are others. I don't think that uh, Christopher Ward's trying to emulate the uh, Oris. Although the Oris Aquas is a really nice integrated bracelet dive watch that's trying neither to be a Gerald Genta design nor a Submariner. The um, overall, though, this is a very good looking watch and the bracelet, <clears throat> the bracelet is very reminiscent of the uh, Tissot PRX and the others of that nature, as well as the um, Octo Finissimo, or actually the whole uh, Bulgari Octo line. Although the, the weight and the feel of it, to me, it's also nice and thick, feels closer to the um, Maurice Lacroix 
icon as far as the bracelet feel goes, even though the icon has a very, very uh, AP bracelet look. The clasp is very nicely done, uh, milled, double deployant, uh, no, no micro adjustment, but most bracelets of this design are not. It does have uh, half links, so you would be able to get a reasonable fit with this. It does give you that choice. That's also very nice. And um, what I've always liked on the mo on most modern bracelets is it's a quick release. Ah, uh, there we go. I was worried my fingernails weren't up to the task. So let's put this back on. Although it's interesting that the quick release pin spring bar is integrated into the case and not part of the bracelet, which is what I've normally seen with uh, integrated bracelet watches that are exchangeable. Interesting touch. So let's put this back on and uh, take a look-see on what it looks like on the sleeve. That's probably why I had trouble initially taking it off because I had expected the spring pins to come off with the uh, bracelet. And so when it didn't give the way I was expecting it to, it threw me off. Oh, uh, let's get the, uh, let's do this and put it back on screen. So, um, you know, actually, if you think about it, putting the spring bar in the case reduces the cost of the bracelet because then you don't have to integrate a um, double-ended release thumbnail spring bar, you know, quick release spring bar into every bracelet. This way, the bracelet can just be a line of links and the case does all the heavy lifting. And I just realized I have to open the bracelet up again so I can put this on the stand so you can see the back. There, I thought I could spare you my clumsy fumblings. And let's take a close up look at the movement in this piece. Now this is a uh, Salida 200-1. So it's a good mainstream Swiss made automatic winding movement with a very, very nice uh, level of finish and decoration for the money you're paying. This is the uh, $1,500, I believe it is, 1,300 uh, euro version, and the 40 millimeter. It's got a good movement for that money. It really does. So I would say this is arguably one of the most competitive integrated bracelet watches in the space. And let's flip it upside down so you can see the other whoops, side of that oh and i just put my thumb right on the glass okay so and there you go so it's not a bad looking piece it's not highly polished and finished but it is clean and tight and everything's working the way it's supposed to be and they did put a nice looking customized rotor on it so now let's uh put it on the wrist so strap back on Let's put it on a uh, wristwatch check wearing my uh, Zenith El Primero Chronomaster on a blue alligator strap that I feel really wakes the watch up a lot more than the black one that it comes with does. So I'll take that off. Bum, bum, bum. Put this on. The double deployment does make it easy to put on. Also, I didn't resize it from my friend who's only slightly larger wrist than mine so I can get away with wearing it at his sizing. And uh, on the wrist, it looks good. It's a good looking piece. It rides well and um, has good wrist presence. I think it's compared to some of the other pieces, especially when you start talking about the money to spend, like for example, the uh, Tissot PRX automatic is about this price, but uh, the Powermatic 80 in it, you know, a lot of people ding it for having the plastic uh, pallet fork and escapement wheel, and uh, the Salita SW200 does not have a pla any plastic parts of that nature in it, as far as I know. So that's the uh, Christopher Ward, the 12. I guess they call it the 12, as I said, because uh, they had 12 variants, but uh, it is a nice watch and definitely worth checking out. So that was the uh, Arctic Blue, Christopher Ward, the 12. Very nice watch. Durable, screw-down crown, nice little screw-down crown protectors, uh, Salita SW200-1 in it, 
good piece for the money. Uh, not the best value for the money out there, but for the style that they're giving you and the quality that they're giving you, I would say that this is arguably the best in its general price range at this price. <clears throat> so that was the uh, Christopher Ward, the 12 Arctic Blue, a very nice piece um, and quite competitive at its price point. You know, we're talking around a thousand, give or take. Although the ones at the lower costs, the lower price points like the Tissot PRX, in my mind, isn't as nicely done as this watch. And the ones that are more expensive, I'll leave that up to you to make that decision. But for a good, rugged, good looking sports watch, screw down crown, uh, nice little screw down crown protectors, uh, quick release bracelet, I would check it out. Thanks for watching. If you like it, please subscribe and uh, tell your friends. Thanks.